Hello, my name is Christopher Leppoltz. I'm the VP of Development, and this is the development group conversation for July 1st, 2020. Uh, 2020 so far this year has been a memorable start. Here's hoping that you have more highs than lows in the second half of the year. I colloquially all refer to this as the turn of the year uh, since we are officially at the halfway point in the calendar year. Um, let's all try to be optimistic while remaining safe. Like all group conversations, my first two slides are around uh, just who is in leadership and direct uh, reports, as well as our vision and mission, uh, which is for reference for those of you who are new to the company or even want to learn more about uh, the development organization. Uh, next is a slide which I've added since the last group conversation, which is around what's been top of mind for me for the last six weeks. I have several initiatives, the first, uh, six initiatives, seven initiatives, I should say, which are kind of focused between OKRs and specific sub-department, uh, important aspects of each sub-department uh, that I'm thinking, have been thinking about and have been challenges for them. That's not all the sub-departments, but it is the ones that uh, have been kind of needed prioritization or guidance associated with them. Also, 360 feedback has been a big part of uh, the last month, month and a half. And nine boxing is a recent addition to our evaluation, which uh, we went through the exercise on Monday uh, for uh, just my directs uh, at uh, Eric's level in, in the engineering department. Lastly, there's a software engineering book uh, out to which uh, we're doing a book club on. And uh, you can click on the link there if you're interested in learning more about that. Uh, hiring has not been as much of a focus uh, just because we slowed down on hiring. But we do have, are starting to have backfills based on attrition. So uh, that's one area that we're looking at. I've also provided a short backlog of things that I'm thinking about adding to the list uh, from that perspective, though I don't have anything specifically documented around those. So one is the cost per MR, thinking in terms of how much we're actually spending per each MR, and also thinking in terms of organizational resilience. How do we deal with uh, difficult situations or transitions of the organization as we grow? Our development department headcount has remained stable for the past few months. We've had some attrition, but at the same time, we were expecting some growth associated with that. So we've kind of stabilized around 280 folks. We also have four managers who are in the interim status. We're all working towards their promotion. So we're excited to see those uh, opportunities uh, basically presented for those, those managers. Whenever we talk about our development department, we talk about MR rate, and it's near and dear to our hearts to talk about our efficiency and one of the important aspects of being at GitLab. Uh, May was a 19-day month, and uh, it was 12.9, which is a great number relative to the work month and April's results. So it actually shows us being more efficient. June is less efficient at this point. Uh, we were looking pretty good through week three. Week four, we were a little bit slower. Um, uh, we're looking to come in close to 12, it looks like right now, for a 21-day month. So uh, it's not necessarily a situation where we want to raise alarms, but what we are doing is just starting to look into it and understand kind of what's going on. And one section has already reported that they went from 92% uh, availability, meaning that people were available and not on PTO, to 78%. So we're starting to see some of the effects of potentially folks who've been uh, cooped up for a while and need to, to go on uh, vacation for a bit, which is good to see because uh, we want to make sure that people uh, can continue to keep up the pace uh, over a longer period of time. Uh, the other aspect is, is that uh, because of friends and family days and holidays, we've seen our mean time to merge increase a little bit over the past time. We've also seen a decrease in idle MRs, uh, 100 in the last week, which we also expect to be part of the reason why we're seeing an uptick here, because I can easily add in a half day uh, based on the fact that idle MRs have, are over two weeks old and that, that effectively uh, works out to be about half of the MRs uh, associated, or the number of the 14 days times the 100, 100 MRs is 1,400, which is about roughly half of the number of MRs we do in a given month. We've also been focusing on increasing our maintainers. I'm happy to report that we've increased our maintainers on both the back end and front end side by three each or six total, which has really uh, brought down our ratios of pretty good amount. Uh, we're also seeing that affect our MRs per maintainer, which we'd really like to see uh, down as well. So we're going to continue to push that effort uh, where we increase the number of maintainers. 
Slide eight talks a little bit about that idle MRs over time and kind of shows that decrease in the past uh, two to three weeks uh, around those efforts. It also shows some historical data around that to kind of give you a better feel for it. Uh, the other aspect is, is we are now tracking our handbook update frequency and we seem to be uh, trending above 100. So we are probably gonna update our target as we move into Q3. Last, just some miscellaneous things I want to talk about. Uh, one is, is cross-functional team collaboration. Happy to report that the availability and performance refinement work no longer needs a synchronous discussion around it. It is incorporated into part of the general infrastructure meeting if necessary as issues, but we're working on making that effectively async. Feels like we've got the right prioritization uh, kind of working there. Similarly, uh, the database uh, sharding team was working towards uh, scalability uh, along the way of working on charting, they realized that they had uh, basically given us a large, a, uh, a large buffer to basically handle our scalability issues. So we're gonna next focus on multi-large instances of scaling uh, between the infrastructure and development teams associated with it. And we continue to work on both the career matrix as well as the mentoring program for uh, MIT. Um, both of those are programs that seem to be progressing along. Next up, I have the OKRs. Uh, we're a little bit behind overall from an OKR perspective. Ideally, at this point, uh, we're two thirds of the way through the quarter. We'd be about 66%. Uh, we're, we're closer to about 33% in two cases. And then the third case, uh, we're only at 10%, uh, though that's the case where I think we can quickly catch up uh, based on what we need to do for handbook updates associated with that. And then for other department hi highlights, I just want to highlight two. One, I want to thanks to the delivery team for the one deployment a day accomplishment. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's allowed us to basically uh, see results, particularly around speed index work. Uh, which has been super important to us uh, to basically see immediate feedback on that based on things we want to try. So it really gives us an opportunity to potentially experiment safely, or I should say experiment while doing it safely uh, with uh, being able to do rapid deployment uh, in short iterations associated with that. Uh, the other one is, is uh, just that we're looking to eliminate the backstage label. Uh, we're basically seeing that as a catch-all uh, for engineers, and we'd really like to see us remove that uh, from our perspective. The other highlights listed on this page, I encourage everybody to kind of read through them because there's some good ones in here as well, uh, particularly around uh, um, our rebalancing effort, uh, for fulfillment of telemetry, and our GitLab architecture as well. Um, that's it for highlights from the group conversation for development uh, for July 1st. I uh, hope everybody has a great GitLab day.